Well, good morning, everybody. Hope you're having a great day. We've got a couple of minutes before we get started. Grab my glass, my cup of hot water and lemon. Oh, it tastes so good. Already had the coffee for the day, so it's hot water and lemon for the rest of the day. Looks like it's uh, shaping up to be a nice looking day out there. It's a Christmas tree weekend in the Harvey household. So we're off to the Christmas tree farm with everybody, girlfriends, boyfriends, uh, the children, mom, dad, the chainsaw. Uh, you'll laugh at this. I went out to one time, I, I, I jumped on the electric bandwagon, bought an electric chainsaw. I thought this is going to be the neatest thing ever. Really got it for hunting, going out and just trimming branches uh, to get into my tree stand or walk into the tree stand or up in the tree stand. It was kind of handy for that, for pruning stuff and like and so on. But anyhow, got out to the tree farm with the electric chainsaw, forgot to charge the battery. You know what happened next. Yeah, we got about... I would say just over halfway through, maybe two thirds of the way through, <laughs> I got the kids to pull on it and the tree went over and we, we managed to, to get it out of there. So um, I'm off the electric bandwagon. We've got a gas powered chainsaw again, nice little top handle from my daughter at uh, Buyers Equipment Power Sport. And I uh, have had no problem cutting a tree down. Last year was no trouble at all, which is great. So, Fully expecting that this year is going to be just as exciting. And uh, yeah, that, uh, then it's Christmas decorating time, rum and eggnog. Oh, it's just going to be magnificent. Love this time of the year. My wife loves it, I think, even more. Uh, she's been on the countdown to Christmas since about the summertime. So we are in the short strokes now. That's for sure, gang. I think we're almost, yeah, today we're inside a month right? We're a month away now. Wow. Have you, are you ready for Christmas? Have you got your gifts? Okay, then let's get started. This 10 o'clock. Welcome to step number four, Prospect Harvesting Pipeline. This skill will help you earn predictable and sustainable income. Now, I'm sure that we'll all agree, regardless of the economy or the inventory, that you always want to have a constant flow of shoppers that'll easily convert to buyers. One thing, just have a constant flow of shoppers. Advertising can do that for us. But we want to convert those to buyers quickly, efficiently, and easily. Look at high performers. Look at all the high performers in your dealership. They got there by being the go-to or go Got the go-to guy, pardon me, or the go-to gal that shoppers buy from with confidence. They're the number one reason their clientele refers them with enthusiasm and conviction. They tell people to go to them. Hi, Amid, welcome this morning. They're the leader because they love what they do and it shows too. High performers are not afraid to sell family and friends because they believe that everyone wants a shiny, newer, faster, bigger, smaller of the latest and greatest technology with a full factory warranty. This step will not cost you a dime in advertising. And there certainly will not be any cold calls or spammy emails. So let's get started. For those of you that know me, my name is Bill Harvey. For those of you that don't, I am the founder of this technology and the seminar leader for today. As I talk, you can read the bullets on the slide and learn a little bit more about me. But as a salesman, manager, and dealer principal, it always intrigued me how many guys and gals are always busy producing consistent results while others, the majority, appear to have too much time in their hands. What if you had five to 10 hot leads daily, regardless of inventory or the economy, would that help you sell two to four more per day, per week, per month? Would that change things dramatically for you in your life? And what if these shoppers were not influenced by advertising? Well, I know you'd sell more and make more, right? 
Just before we start, allow me a moment to familiarize everyone with the platform and set the room. If you're a Zoomer or expert, please bear with me. If you're new to Zoom, it's easy. If you see my lips moving, yes, there is sound. Click join with computer audio, assuming that you're reading the subtitles along the bottom of the screen. If you cannot hear me, look for the microphone icon in the lower left-hand corner of this Zoom window. If the microphone has a red line and strike through it, your microphone is muted. If your speaker icon has a red line or strike through it, then your speakers are muted like your microphone. Simply click on that icon and that should give you sound or minimize this window and click join with computer audio. Then click on the Zoom window to bring the this presentation back up. Now, to be less disruptive to those around you, think about connecting with earbuds or headphones. This definitely suggests that you are not available while staring at your computer screen. If the app did not go to full screen, you can do so by clicking on the upper right-hand corner to enlarge that. You can put up a sign on your desk or your door that you are in a meeting. And of course, earbuds obviously suggest that you are not available, but as always, we need to be ready for those friendly buyer interruptions. Now, position your pointer at the bottom of the screen and the toolbar will pop up where you can click on the reactions button. And here you can so you can either send me a reaction. Actually, I'm getting ahead of myself. I actually wanted to just share with you on this screen, looking at it, the text chat function. That's why I said good morning to Hamid because Hamid sent me a message through the text chat function there. So if you click on the chat, another window will appear. Thanks, Dalton, where you can send me a message. And then, of course, if you have a question and you need an answer to it, I will see that quickly on my other screen. Thanks, Mark. And of course, if you know the answer to that person's question, if you would kindly answer it. And as always, simple rules of, of being in a classroom apply here of being respectful, courteous, and polite. Thanks, Peter. If you see a question and know the answer, again, feel free to contribute. If I ask you to give me a thumbs up or a smiley face, these reactions can be found on the toolbar. Position your pointer at the bottom of the screen. The toolbar will pop up where my where my screen of my face is right now. I'll move that out of the way. Click on the reaction. You can do so right now. You can test this if you like. You can give me a thumbs up, smiley face. Thanks, Craig. I really appreciate that. And of course, you get out of this session what you put into it. If you want to passively sit there and not do anything, thanks, Peter. You can do so, but you get out of it really what you put into it. So I hope you're engaged and you're only focused on me. So some of you have not joined the private members Facebook group, and I really want to encourage you to do so. This is our mastermind. And if you haven't joined, you're really missing out. This community is about like-minded sales, automotive salespeople, including power sports, professionals talking and sharing exclusive content. There are other groups on Facebook, but nothing exclusive to automobile sales professionals coming together, sharing experiences, wins, and asking for help. Testing talk tracks, getting advice fast and at any time of the day is really what we're after here. When you see a post, if you know the answer and can help out, feel free to do so. Even if you see me or anyone on my, one of my, any one of my team members respond to that post, feel free to contribute as well. If you've got another suggestion, an angle, a tip, or a hint. Now, for any of you starting out embracing this virtual world of social, you may feel a little alone. Well, there's no need to. These groups, albeit one-dimensional, just the screen in front of you, are excellent ways to feel a part of the movement. And most importantly, they're available on this thing, anywhere at all. You can get those messages. Today, it's all about getting answers fast, like searching Google. Your struggle is over. Here, we can get together, share the wealth of information quickly and immediately. Being active in groups transforms you from struggling, trying to figure it all on your own, to getting answers fast and capitalizing on proven activities. If you've not already joined, please, I really want to encourage you to do so. So our starting point for today of your pipeline is with your daily planner. So whatever planner you use, you need to schedule routine tasks of staying connected to be top of mind with customers. 
Because if you prefer to wing it and rely on your CRM to remind you, it could be too late. Auto Alert, another prospect harvesting software assistance will remind you, but if you don't schedule when to look for opportunities, you can miss out on them. You want the customers that are qualified and determined to buy, but may not necessarily be shopping. So if they're not influenced by advertisements, that's an excellent time to promote your deal and your offer. Now, the first place the manifesto addresses what to do with shoppers virtually in the showroom is the first phase, those first three steps of the manifesto. Although these customers are committed in the showroom or calling on the phone or emailing in for inquires and quotes, they are the toughest to close and at the lowest gross profit. Now, the past few months have not been the case, but we're seeing a shift back to traditional, even with depleted inventories. These are typical customers influenced by OE and dealership advertising. Your pipeline is not about mass advertising. Our goal then, my goal for you, is to teach you to attract shoppers that want shiny, newer, faster, warrantied vehicles, but are not actively shopping. So your pipeline of shoppers are easier to close and more qualified to buy, meaning they'll wait for orders to arrive. They pay more over history. I'm not making that up. NADA tracks this stuff. We don't do that with CADA in Canada, but the NADA does do that for us. The reason is more important than the statistic. The reason is that your customers your shoppers appreciate your personal service. That's why they buy from you again. And that's why they pay a little bit more. They're patient, interested, and generally better capitalized, meaning they have more money in their pocket and that makes them more pleasant to deal with. They are not influenced by confusing advertisements of limited inventory and silly trade-in statements. I call these shoppers for you, unintentional shoppers, for you. They're unintentionally, yes, all by themselves, but we don't have need to give that label to them. This is the direction we want to go. Captivate and capture these people who aren't necessarily shopping. Attracting these shoppers into your sales funnel provides you with a pipeline of predictable sales. So your starting point to be top of mind when any shopper thinks of buying has to be you. This is any salesperson's greatest challenge of any industry, let alone the automotive industry, which is high ticket. And this is a daily exercise that must be become part of your routine, top of mind. Not all shoppers are influenced or triggered by grandiose advertisements, as you may think. You can watch any high achievers. They consistently sell more, regardless of economy, attracting shoppers that aren't actively shopping. And the best part is it doesn't have to cost you a dime. This is why high performers in your dealerships are always the leaders on the board. They're always thinking, who can I sell to? Their drive and motivation is selling. They don't likely put in any more hours than you do, right? Then you got to be asking yourself, well, how do they fill their pipeline while others struggle? Ah, now that's a great question and effectively the secret, isn't it? High performers I coach get to their qualified buyers before they start shopping. They take balanced or equitable trade-ins in, making their job easier, helping keep the payments same or affordable, and they get financing approvals easily. High performers hang out in the service department, checking deliveries and looking for opportunities. At the first dealership I worked at, I learned very quickly to network and create a staff, effectively scaling my own activity and work. So I had several technicians on my payroll. I shared my commission with any tech that brought me a customer. It was on a percentage basis. I didn't split it in half. This tactic alone moved me up the leaderboard in days. It was a secret. I kept it to myself. I didn't tell anybody else. Word did eventually get out. So I'm certain 
whomever created the system like auto alert leverages this strategy in their software system. And effectively, this formed my philosophy behind any customer would consider changing their vehicle for a shiny, faster, more fuel efficient, bigger or smaller with a warranty, but they don't know they can. That's why I call them unintentional. This tactic alone can increase your sales by 30 to 40% with a pipeline of predictable sales and income. So I might as well warn you that if you're not spending at least 60% of your time working your pipeline, staying connected, you'll never have predictable sales and income. Step number eight, the blueprint, for those of you that have gone through that, will identify the sources of customers and two thirds, 66% of those sources come from consistent follow-up. Your plan to be top of mind, to fill that pipeline. So let me ask you this before we get too far into this. Tell me in the chat what you would like to know about prospect pipeline harvesting techniques. Text me in your response, please. I'm gonna continue the presentation in the interest of time so that we finish this off on a timely basis. Or if you prefer, save a question about prospect pipeline harvesting for the end of the presentation. This step, prospect harvesting pipeline has eight modules. So I'm gonna share with you its tactics and bundle these tactics together in a strategy that'll make it easy for you to follow. So you'll have a plan. The first source is mechanisms to drive traffic in your pipeline. The second, third, fourth, and fifth source, if you're reading along with me on this slide, are about leveraging relationships. Now, I've already hinted before at the fixed operations opportunity. I'll share with you how to milk your community. And lastly, the most creative and enjoyable being social media. So let's start with two ways to get leads into your funnel. What most teachers and programs don't share with you is that a pipeline flows into your sales funnel. Most of them talk about them as two separate entities because they are, but they'll blend it together saying the pipeline is your funnel. It is not. The pipeline flows into your funnel. The open market is the pipeline, ripe with buyers and yet heavily influenced by aggressive advertisements, defining a, a, and, and attracting attention only with best price. Yeah, the last couple of years, it's been, we have inventory, but it's quickly reverting back to best price. And best price, if it's advertised, is low gross. Your pipeline is different and you can fill it organically. That means no cost and no paying for advertisements for you. The big difference is organic target shoppers, albeit a smaller pool, but they're well qualified and cost you nothing but your time. So keep in mind to fill a pipeline, there may be times that running advertisements is effective, but let's walk before we can run. So organic is no cost to you. And that is great. But Showroom call-ins and emails or virtual prospects are not organic, albeit no cost to you. These shoppers are responding to or influenced by advertising. That means somebody paid, but they're in the showroom. It didn't cost you anything. And they're an excellent source of sales and they will turn into repeat and referral business, including networking. And that's why we have to do both and balance our time. Organic includes tactics of social media, which is terrific. And I'll cover this, setting up accounts and your pages on various platforms in step number nine, leveraging apps and technology. So don't miss that webinar and make sure that you go through that step several times. Email, phone calls, personal visits, hobby, interests, sporting events, attendance are excellent interests for you to stay connected and be top of mind, subtly suggesting that they buy your product. An event right now that I think has gotta to be top of mind for everybody is the Santa Claus Parade, or I guess in some communities, the Santa Parade. So that's fine. 
or the holiday season parade, whatever you want to call it. Let's not get hung up on the semantics and let's not let our political views get influenced here as well. Just go and take your business card and hand it out to customers that, or, or even prospects that you recognize from before and maybe tape a little candy to the back of your business card and hand it to them, really give them a reason to, like a candy cane and have your dealership branded or at least your manufacturer's branded clothing on so that people see you and you're always top of mind, not to mention you get to enjoy watching the parade. These are the subtle suggestions that go deep to their subconscious that they need to know who and who to trust to buy from. Now, for instance, leveraging a sporting event or an interest of yours. One of my closest friends is a Polaris snowmobile and ATV dealer. He's a really super guy and he's magnificent at selling, whether he knows it or not. And I've told him before, and he said, that's not my intention. I'm like, mm, I don't know. He's really subtle. He'll say, hey, Harv, you want to go on a snowmobile trip? Who wouldn't, especially as a snowmobile enthusiast like I am. Or he'll say in the spring or the fall, do you want to come up to the camp for an ATV weekend? Now, out on a ride of those items, he'll say, hey, Harv, try this new one. I've actually declined. I've several times declined. And he goes, why? Why wouldn't you just want to try it? Because I said, if I like it, I'll buy it. And he knows that. And that's dynamite because the results of me trying are five snowmobiles, seven ATVs, and a number of other things. The results of his cunning, not so salesy strategy. Now, the latest one that he invited me to is a side-by-side -side ride along. Now, these are like those little Jeeps that you see all over the place and pictured here on the, the three that are towards the back and off to the left-hand side of the screen. That was amazing. That was a blast. They go like, like a, a cut cat. They're just fast as lightning. And of course, I never considered one before, and I'm kind of thinking about it. We really enjoy being together, and I really enjoy his company. And outside the showroom, by being salesy like this, is super effective. It's these subtle, passive sales tactics, void of advertising, that makes selling so easy and, for him, profitable. So paying for ads is another really, really effective strategy that you can leverage on various platforms. Paying for ads can be as inexpensive. And I know I didn't, I told you in the very beginning that you don't have to pay anything for them, but paying for ads, I want you to know this, can be as little as 10 cents on YouTube or as little as pennies with keywords on Google. Certainly you can buy adver advertising space on AutoTrader, Kijiji and Craigslist featuring your product so they stay top of list or on eBay and Facebook Marketplace is very inexpensive too. Now I'll share with you cost and circulation of keyword search and step number nine, leveraging apps and technology of all those platforms because it's one thing just advertising on there, but that is a shotgun approach. That's a spray and pray method. You do need to be pointed and understand the back end to get your ads in front of the buyers, the prospective buyers, the shoppers that really would like to have your product. And there's a way to do that. The key ingredient is understanding the buyer odyssey following the eight steps, facilitating a fantastic presentation. First of all, virtually, second of all, in person and taking your client through those eight steps because that's really what converts. It's terrific forming a pipeline and driving traffic into your funnel. But if you don't know what you're doing, it's, a, it's effort all for, for nothing. You must nail those three steps of, those, of that first phase one. And as easy as you attract them, you can piss them off and send them away. Now, referrals are golden. Money in the bank. I didn't say more referrals because most of you don't have a steady pipeline of referrals. Statistics prove this unquestionably the easiest, most lucrative sale for you is selling to those who like, believe, and trust you now. As mentioned before, it's your attractive character that influences decisions. Your honest, open, and transparent business practice builds trust, and that becomes your brand. 
Don't let anybody talk to you about branding yourself. Don't let anyone talk you into spending money on branding yourself. Your brand is being top of mind, you. And that's built on likability and trust. These characteristics are lead magnets for referrals. Now, the fastest and easiest way to build your business is selling to repeat buyers. They were the second fastest and easiest way, pardon me. These buyers close 40% better than leads in the showroom. And with success like that, you could say walk-in traffic is at, warm, is at best warm leads. With my tactics, you'll convert four times better than showroom as these are the official statistics. They're not mine. In fact, I'll prove it to you in step number eight and demonstrate the math, your numbers, that these people produce sales faster, easier, and more profitably. But if you're thinking like, why? Hmm, why, Bill? Well, shoppers that trust you, as we know, buy from you. That's simple. It's elementary. However, my tactics of tracking repeats that are your ideal customer increase your closing ratio from less than 10% with showroom to well into 30 and 40% because these shoppers are qualified. You qualified them. You picked them. You went after them. You're targeting them. If they're flakes, if they can't get financed, if they hate your product and would never drive it, why would you call them? Why would you send them an email? Why would you even try? You qualify them. That's why they're so dynamite. So you can start doing this activity today. Anyone who has purchased an automobile from you at any time, yesterday, last week, last month, last quarter, last six months, last year, the year before that, anyone who has purchased an automobile from you is ripe for the second one in their driveway. Now let's do a quick check-in to make sure that we're aligned on this. Imagine you are on holidays and your follow-up system is keeping you top of mind and you're staying in touch with your clients. Could you come back to five, six, or even 10 sales made? It's dreamy, it's hopeful, It'd be neat if it happened, wouldn't it? Could that happen? Yeah, absolutely that could happen. Quickly and easily. It's as easy as sending pre-designed emails that you make up yourself. I can help you with them. Snail mail, I've got templates for this. Ringless voicemail and SMS messages that get read and answered. Turbo Marketing is the automotive marketing source that can help you with these. Matador is the software system that is the most effective automotive intelligence SMS messaging system I have found. Its ability to learn the dialogue that happens and shoot messages back is uncanny. It's incredible how this AI system looks like a real person. And of course, I share more steps about, I must share more details about those applications in step number nine, leveraging apps and technology. So make communication your hobby. What I'm saying is to be top of mind, you must rise above the crowd. If you want your customer to buy a second, third, or fourth vehicle from you, you need to ask for it. But saying, hey, do you want to buy my stuff? That isn't what they want to hear. And you wouldn't either. So don't do it. That's commission breath and customers hate it. Just don't do it. Watch yourself on that. Getting referrals is tough. No two ways about it. And of course, I'm going to add this to it as well. It's impossible if you never ask. Did you get that? Getting referrals is tough and impossible. It's easy, not because when the third customer, well, pardon me, what makes it so difficult and not easy is because when the third customer says, after you've asked, hey, do you know anybody who wants to buy a car? And they say, no. After the third one that you do, you're probably not going to do it again, right? So here's a twist. Could you say this? Or even more likely, let me tell you what you're probably saying now. You're probably saying now, well, we or I pay $75 for a referral that turns into a sale. 
Okay, let's dissect that statement. Let's do a little autopsy on our statement there and see if this is really going to work. And maybe we'll discover why it doesn't work. $75 referral on a $130,000 truck sale. Okay, I'm exaggerating. I'm picking your most expensive product loaded right up, adding the taxes in $130,000 truck sale, no trade in. Hmm. Is anyone dropping their head like me? Give me a thumbs up or a reaction. Like, oh, when you put it like that, Bill. Yeah, yeah, I, I guess it really isn't a great idea. Now, I'm not saying paying referrals is not a bad idea. If you've tried without success, you're probably doing it wrong. If you're going to pay for a referral, do so in one, uh, thanks, Hamid, in one of two capacities. Number one, name and number is the small talk. That's really what you want to get out of this. All you want is to get a name and number. And that's what you will pay for first. Name and number. And that's a small payout, right? Tim's coffee cart, uh, a little Hot Wheels car, some kind of a thanks. Merch out of your parts department. Find out from the parts manager what the manufacturer is closing out of and buy that stuff and have a basket of it so that you can hand that out. Number two for your referrals, paying for your referrals is to pay only on the sale. That's the big thanks. What I'm saying is don't lead with, I pay for referrals. That's salesy and commission breath. Nobody wants to hear that. Instruct your buyers what you want them to do. And you say something like this, you must know someone who would like or needs to drive a shiny, newer, latest and greatest technology with a full factory warranty, but doesn't know how easy I can make that happen. Do you need me to repeat that for you? You must know someone who would like or needs to drive a shiny, newer, latest technology and full factory warranty, but doesn't know how easy I can make that happen. Just like the one you got. Then surprise and delight them with the Tim's coffee card, Hot Wheels car, merch out of your parts department, and the big reward at the end. Maybe that's dinner to um, uh, Montana's. I picked Montana's and Kelsey's, I think, because that is part of, ah, starts with a C. I'm going to forget the restaurant chain that owns all of it. And Harvey's is mixed in there. You can get a gift card that will do all of those. And oh my gosh, a, a really close friend owned the company. He was chairman of the company. It'll come to me. But Something small like that and something big is the surprise and delight. That's what will get them to remember you. And timing is everything. You know that adage? The best time is when they're most excited about you to ask for that referral, to request that referral. When you request that referral, it's like your feature on the product that they just purchased. That's what makes it so amazing and terrific you are just as much of an important feature. And obviously, let's cover off the corollary of that scenario. If the customer is annoyed, frustrated, or disappointed with you, the product or the dealership, stop. Don't send them anything. Don't request a referral. Just stop. Whatever went wrong, focus on repairing that and fixing it. The sad truth and reality is, let me, let me identify this right now. The sad truth is that you can't please 100% of the people you meet. And trying to do so, it's demoralizing and quite frankly, impossible. Any psychologist, sociologist will share those details with you. So it's natural not all of your customers love you, but that should never exceed more than 10%. And you can afford to lose those ones. The paradigm is that you will make two or three more sales per month as you focus on yes shoppers and not worrying about that 10%. Clear that off your memory bank. Get that off your plate. Go outside and scream at something if you have to, but get that 10% out of your way. Oh, my screen is in the way of the subtitles. My apologies there, gang. So make sure you do that recognize you can't please them all, 
but that should never exceed more than 10%. And I've been there. I've transcended what you're going through. That's why I share these details with you. This is how you get referrals. After this webinar, go to your list of buyers, pick a name, dial their number and say this, point blank. Say it, read it, write it down right now. May I ask you for a favor? Then politely wait for their response. You're always going to get a yes, right? Because you know them, they like you, it's positive. They, they love their automobile. You say this, you will be approached by many people complimenting your vehicle choice. Kara, thank you, Craig. Thank you. Kara Foods, absolutely. At some point, someone will ask you, where did you get it? Whom did you buy it from? What does this feature do or does your vehicle have such and such a feature? When that happens, will you kindly notify me? Can you do that for me? Now, did you hear me ask for a referral there? You say, hey, do you know anybody? Yeah, you know, in your travels, when you meet people with your new car, you know, ask them if, they, if they'd like to have one too. That doesn't happen. It's never going to happen. Let me read that to you again. You start off with, right after the webinar, grab one or two names and test this out. May I ask you for a favor? Politely, we wait for their response. It's always going to be yes. And then you say, you will be approached by many people complimenting your vehicle choice. At some point, someone will ask you, where did you get it? Who did you buy it from? What does the feature do or does your vehicle have this feature? When that happens, will you kindly notify me? Can you do that for me? I hope you really got the gist of that. The secret to getting that referral is, may I ask a favor? Will you do, can you notify me? Can you do that? Will you do that for me? I never asked for the referral, that's commission breath, but I repeated over and over to get their confirmation, to really sink it deep in their psyche, that yes, you know what? I've got an obligation to you. You got me a great deal. I bought a terrific product. They like our relationship. They want to buy from you forever. They don't want to go looking for a new salesperson. Then I build my customer base one at a time. I need more. I didn't say anything about paying for a referral. Keep that bird dog referral fee in your back pocket as surprise and delight. Now, if they say to you, sure, no problem at all. When that happens, you've got to be ready to go. You got to keep at it. You got to constantly remind them. You could say this to them. Now, I know you'll be showing off your vehicle to the next door neighbor. Can you do me this favor and get their name and number? And then you could say something along the lines, hey, when your neighbor sees your new vehicle and ask, where did you get it? Whom did you buy it from? What does the feature do? Or does your vehicle have a particular feature? Can you shoot me a message real quick of their name and phone number? Can you do that for me? Will you do that for me, please? Again, do you hear that? Here, there's the consistency. Here's the strategy, assembling all these tactics. Notice the tactic is similar to the last one. Hey, when your neighbor sees your new vehicle, and ask, where did you get it? Whom did you buy it from? What does the feature have? Or does your vehicle have a particular feature? And I wouldn't list those like I'm doing here. I'm exaggerating right there. I'm just, I'm just, you know, just blurting it all out to you. You pick the one and then finish it off with, shoot me a message with their name and phone number. Can you do that? Will you do that for me? Please, I need this. Now, you're not begging and pleading. But you need to leave them hanging with that. Need to, need to make them feel like this is a huge favor. You could add that if your neighbor says that they would like, one, like to have one too, then give them my coordinates. Then for sure, send me their name and number or email. Will you do that for me? Can I count on you to do so? Do you get it? You're requesting referrals. That's how you get referrals. That's how the seasoned pros do it. They don't ask. Hey, if you know anybody, you know, that's thinking about buying a car, you know, you keep me in mind. It doesn't work. It never did. That's someone of no confidence in themselves, in the dealership they work at, in the industry they're playing in and the brand they represent. 
in my opinion, I don't, if, if I would never have a salesperson on my floor like that, but if I had a salesperson on the floor like that and they were doing that, I'd say, don't ask for referrals anymore. Okay. Just, yeah, just don't do it at all. Anyhow, I digress. And of course you, your most important and easiest referral to get out of somebody is a family member. You know, from step two of the manifesto, almost half, like 48% of their immediate family will purchase a new vehicle in the next six months. If only half of that statistic comes true for you, you can still sell two, three, four, five more per month in the next six months. If you just started today, you'd sell two, three, four, five more per month for the next six months going forward. If you go further back, than the people who just bought from you yesterday, last week, and this month, then you can increase those numbers. So tell them you must have a brother, sister, son-in-law, daughter, friend, best friend, uncle, aunt that should be driving a newer vehicle. When they see how excited you are, will you tell them how easy and inexpensive and pleased you are with me? Do you need me to read that to you again? You must have a brother, sister, in-law, son, daughter, friend, best friend, uncle, aunt that should be driving a newer vehicle. I didn't say brand new. I didn't say what brand. I didn't say what model. I just said a newer vehicle. And that's top of mind right now because we're really going after used, right? For those of you that are inventory challenged. When they see, write this down. When they see how excited you are, tell them how easy, inexpensive, and pleased you are with me. Then wait for the response and finish off with this. I build my business one customer at a time. I could really use your help. People who like you want to help you. And from the dynamic buyer odyssey, step number one, dominant, aggressive buyers are your best source of referrals. Your best source. The one that was the toughest, the hard act. They didn't want to drive it. Three points on the walk around. Just wanted your best price. They love, absolutely love knowing they are instrumental in your development. They are your best supporter. They are your best source of referrals. Strange, but true. So this has happened to me several times. I just don't blurt this tactic out at you and say, oh, you know, go ahead and try it. Or I knew somebody else that once tried it. This really happened to me. I patterned this tactic after experience. I purchased, after I purchased a vehicle, be it a boat, motorcycle, or snowmobile, and showing it off to my dad, weeks later, he'd show up with one too, literally from a sport utility to a pickup truck. He showed up one time in a pickup truck. I was floored. I said to my mom, I said, what's going on with dad? Is he going through another midlife crisis? Because he was a lot older at that point. She laughed. She goes, I don't know what we have a pickup truck for. I think he bought one because you were so excited about yours. Same with a snowmobile. He bought a snowmobile. He hated snowmobiles. He was a skier. He bought an ATV shortly after I bought an ATV and bought, bought them for my kids as well. We're all riding together. He goes, I want to be a part of it. He didn't have any interest in these sports until he saw mine. Happened to my brother as well. It's so predictable, it's almost comical. Now, did you get the message that I did not say, do you know someone? Because they don't. And they're never going to say that they do. They don't know who's looking to buy. Worse, You'll sound meek and unsure, just as I demonstrated earlier. Buyers refer salespeople that are confident because they're competent. It's what we call the confidence confidence loop. Conf confidence competence loop, pardon me. It's a figure eight on its side. Draw an eight, turn it sideways. When you make the process easy for them to do business with you and it's comfortable, they trust you. They'll be happy to refer others because it'll help their friends and their family with you as a competent saleswoman. And it'll compliment them because they made the referral. And of course, your bird dog referral as much is not nearly as much of an incentive as you think it actually is. 
many buyers, especially aggressive dominant buyers, will simply say, keep it or pass it on to my referral anyway and save them some more money. It's almost like they're embarrassed to accept it. And that's why I like the gift card, that Care of Foods gift card as a suggestion, because it's a whole lot easier to accept the gift card. They have no idea how much on there or what is involved than it is to send them a 75, 150. I have one retailer that has a $400 referral. That's awesome and fantastic. But understand that is not the motivation for, for buyers to give you a referral. So you must be thinking, okay, Bill, when? Like, when do you use each or any of these talk tracks? And that's a great question. My answer is don't let an opportunity pass you by. That is the secret. But I know what you're thinking, that you're going to be pushy. And the only way that you're being pushy is if you're not helping them. And of course, you're only really, really pushy when you're being demanding because you think that you're entitled and you deserve to ask for this and they are requested or required to send you repeat business or referral business. That is when you're pushy, when you're not helping them and the benefit is solely for you. Now, as we learned at step one of communication, it's not so much what you say, it's how you say it. So go back and review those skills of communication. You earn a referral because you did a great job. Now, referrals close at the same rate repeat buyers do, 34 to 40% better than showroom and virtual buyers. That means you get one referral per sold vehicle and sell eight units per month. You will sell three units next month. In addition to your showroom, and virtual traffic. Do you see how easy it is to hit double digits and make a six-figure income? I really hope you're getting that message. This pipeline is the secret to your success. So you and I both know at the six-month point of ownership, many, if not all customers, have forgotten your name. Many, if not all, have forgotten. In fact, as this graph indicates, these are hard and fast numbers from NADA Less than 8% of your buyers stated they can even remember your name at the six-month point of ownership. You need to ensure this does not happen to you. The easiest and least expensive method to stay top of mind is to schedule these follow-up activities. Email, phone calls, social media, weeks, days, and months ahead of time. You want to contact your customer base at least six times. And we'll talk about that in subsequent webinars. In step number nine, leveraging apps and technology, I share with you how to use Hootsuite, Meet, Edgar, and Sendable as schedulers to get more done in four hours than most do in a week. Step number nine isn't so much about apps and technology as it is about personal productivity and time management. You're probably adding it all up right now and thinking, oh gosh, Bill, oh, I, uh, there's not going to be enough time in the day. You have to make time in the day. It's critical to fill your pipeline. You make time in the day by scheduling it. When your real raw and relevant, interesting content gets out to your clientele, they'll remember you and you won't have to work hard at this. Sending messages with information that they may not have or may not have asked for, but could definitely benefit by having like new model announcement, technology, allocation, and transport constraints are dynamite. All information you didn't have to create. You curate it. You collect it. You reach out and grab it. You don't have to sit there and dream it up. You can draft a white paper on how bank AI, automotive, uh, automatic intelligence or automated intelligence, pardon me, bank AI determines what is an automobile and who gets approved and how you can save buyers from paying too much money. Of course, in step nine, you'll learn more about that through iDealers and the importance of, thank you, Craig, artificial intelligence. You'll save money with iDealer and the importance of pricing. You can also talk about the effects of the American car market influencing trade values. You could demonstrate the effects of compound negative equity on payments and what to do to keep their payments the same, affordable, 
or just slightly higher. A white paper is just as it sounds, a simple research piece written in a letter form, providing information that's interesting and beneficial. You don't need a library of these. You just need six or seven, maybe eight, that you're going to circulate once a week. Eight would be two months worth. By the time they read it the first time, they're not going to remember when they get it 90 days from now. The secret in your messaging is to always add this tagline, just like yours. When your prospect thinks you created communications, any piece just for them, they won't think that this is an advertisement. It's kind of like the Martha, the, the, the Martha Stewart, if you ever watched the documentary on Martha Stewart, they disguise her infomercial as a TV show, disguised as an infomercial, disguised as a TV show. I mean, it, it, didn't, it didn't even make any sense, but you got to watch the huge documentary to get the whole gist of that. However, slow down on this. Hang on a second. I know what you're thinking now. You want to blast a whole bunch of people with a message to fill your pipeline. And that's not a good idea for two reasons. Number one, that blast of a whole bunch of information is shallow work and it doesn't yield results quickly or even beneficially. Number two, a big blast is a lot of work. It's a ton of work. Talk to those that do it regularly. I'm one of them. Instead, funnel your leads to a purified your list. Your purified list. Funnel your leads to a purified. You're going to purify it, and it's your list rather than a great big list. Don't ever consider buying a list. That's only good for Wendell Motors, Thor Motors, Polaris, Dodge, and the list goes on. And really, it's not that effective either. And of course, as we well know, with Castle, there are laws protecting spamming. But as I mentioned in the very beginning, you don't have to spam. Purify your list. Because all you're going to do, and you don't have a lot of time for this, we got to be ready for those friendly customer interruptions of showroom people that come in, call us on the phone, and email in anyhow. You're only going to be sending out five to six messages per day to your portfolio. It's as easy as that. I know if I don't make it easy, direct, and effortless, you won't do it. That will not require five or six messages a day, will not require a mail delivery system like MailChimp or Kartra or Google now has a mail delivery service. You won't get labeled a spammer and blocked by your email provider. And of course, if it's going through the dealership, that's a big deal. If it's your personal email, yeah, you could get blocked. You really can't send more than five or six messages anymore. And as we've seen, you'll likely sell half of those that you reach out to anyway. So how many more do you need? So your list will produce a massive difference to you. You just got to work at it. The dynamic buyer odyssey applies to the steps necessary to successfully fill a pipeline. That's what we're talking about here. Filling the pipeline all the time. Visual people, and of course, this goes back to step one of the dynamic buyer odyssey. Visual people gravitate to social media. Auditory people like the phone and the kinesthetic are touchy-feely who like email and conventional mail. They got to hold something. I got to touch it. As much as they're holding this thing, the thumbing, the scrolling isn't the same. They probably don't read kinesthetics, don't read books, ebooks on tablets, laptops, and on certainly never on their phone. They can, unquestionably they can. I know you'll disqualify me on that, but but they generally don't. The transformation triggers for you leveraging the right communication style are shiny, faster, technology, and warranted. Those are the triggers. You got to build that into your, all your communication pieces. Your information being real, raw, and relevant gets results, and you get what you want. A conversation that you need to funnel down eventually to a sale. Now, don't jeopardize trust with a sales pitch like now is a great time to buy. And make sure when you do reach out to them through the eight steps to success, that diagram is where you see it all the time. 
beside your computer terminal, on your bathroom mirror at home, in your automobile, on the way to work. You see that all the time. Welcome, interview, presentation, demonstration, trade appraisal, purchase consultation, delivery, and follow up. Make sure it's top of mind for you all the time with every customer that you talk to. Be sure it's where you see it. So start with their preferred method of communication. And I know and have proven the best posting content strategy is the easiest, and that's random. Just pick something to post about. But schedule, 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 schedule this into your day. Take your Google calendar, your Outlook calendar, write it down on a piece of paper if you're analog still, if you've got day timers, that's fine. I don't care what you use. Schedule it. Set aside this time about what you're planning on post. Your post should not take more than hours to curate either. Done. It shouldn't take more than an hour even. I, I said hours. It shouldn't take more than an hour. Done is better than perfection. Make it easy by adding a song if you're doing TikTok, matching it up with a video of one of your products. All done on your smartphone. Doors opening, engine running, lyrics that match up. The possibilities are endless and can be really fun. Imagine at the end of the month, if all of you grabbed your smartphone, went out to a vehicle and closed each door, the tailgate and the hood saying the programs are done. The last day, the last hour of the program, programs are done. Clunk, clunk, snap, bang, boom, bam, bomb. Sunroof closing. Now, when they come in in the next month, they're like, yeah, you know, we want to go with it. Hopefully they saw your post. Say, hey, did you see my post? Like they're not kidding around. They're done. Visual, we're visual and video hits that absolutely perfect. Not to mention you can have a ton of fun with it. You only have to film it once. And at the end of every program, that's your post at the end of the day. And then you schedule that into Hootsuite and meet Edgar and you're not having to do it in the hour that you're closing. It can just run in perpetuity forever when that program ends. The possibilities are endless. It can be really fun. It's really exciting and engaging when your audience reaches out to you and that proves your efforts working. Now, if they prefer email, Create a few templates such as one, how your credit scores are less affected by your credit with the emphasis actually placed on vehicle pricing. An overpriced vehicle will not get approved even if Bill Gates or Warren Buffett tried to buy it. Adding, that's not the only factor. Obviously your credit is important. And of course, here are ways for you to ensure that your credit score always is high. I deal in step nine will shed a lot of light on that topic. Number two, you could cut your monthly payments in half by selling us your second or third vehicle and replace it with a newer, shiny, technologically advanced and warrantied vehicle at the same, slightly higher, or even lower your monthly payment. You could provide content to your clientele about used vehicle prices presented with a graph or a pie chart of the past few years. And as prices have gone up or gone down, you could insert a table demonstrating the effects of a downstroke, money down, on a loan to keep payments the same or, or get a better, lower payment. But don't spell it all out. Don't be so detailed. This is a thesis, several pages long. It's a small brief that you're trying to send to them that orchestrated correctly works to your benefit, which means you got to be brief. There's got to be a hook and a trigger for them to want to call you. So tell them, but don't, don't share all of it. The focus is again, and always maintain the focus. Let's keep the main thing, the main thing. The focus is on shiny, newer, technologically advanced, warranted as your solution. Keep the main thing, the main thing. Don't rule out conventional mail either. You could leverage one of your email messages and a few pictures to make it look different. If they did not read your email, it's new information. If they read your email, you're reinforcing your message. The point is trigger. Your personal message could say, We're, we are paying in excess of market value for clean use vehicles. Here is why, and insert a graphic. That could be a chart, that could be a graph, that could be a statement. Before you visit me, however, before you come in to see me, 
Now you want to say to them, stage your vehicle. And you do so by, and I've shared this with you before, wash it inside the wheel wells, under the hood, wipe the dash, the door panels down, the door jams down, vacuum the floor, wash the mats and clean the windows, clear the glove box, the center storage compartment, make sure the owner's manual's in there, wipe out the cargo area. And when they come in, make sure the, the both keys are on the fob and the vehicle's out of gas. Dynamite. If it's virtual, Go through the same exercise with them. Show me these things, F front, under the hood, just like your walk around. And then share those details with your used car buyer. You could draft 12 letters. And now you've got a whole year's worth of email and conventional mail follow-up. Now, leveraging the right medium is the, re is the next step. SMS email, conventional mail, phone calls, or voicemail, including ringless voicemail, will keep you top of mind through the six-month point of ownership, right? Let's keep in mind why we're doing this. When you select this tactic with a perfect script to trigger action and sequence your messages, you'll have developed a formula for success, which is a strategy. You're assembling these tactics, SMS, messaging, email, phone call, snail mail, carrier pigeon. These are tactics that form your strategy. One thing I can assure you of sending one message one time will never work. If that's your plan, don't even bother. You need a strategy to consistently get results. Now, the second step is the transformation. So the sad reality is that no one likes to buy your product. They love having it and enjoying it and getting it. It's not what you say and sell. It's what your vehicle does for them. And that's really how you say it. If you simply tell them about your new offering, the customer will simply perceive it as an improvement. Autonomous, electric driving, driving dynamics are all improvements. And these are over what their old vehicle doesn't have. They're just improvements for motoring. The transformation triggers are about opportunity. The opportunity is shiny, faster, fuel efficient because it saves them money, safer because they have something's changed in their life and they have a family now, maybe young ones and little ones in the car, bigger to haul more, smaller because they're downsizing, less expensive because their payments are too high, more expensive because they've got a new job, a new career, whatever the case is, and warrantied, peace of mind motoring. Can you imagine the difference between you and ordinary average salespeople puking product knowledge, improvements versus the, your messages of opportunities, fuel savings, bigger, powerful, and warranty? That's what gets attention. And they'll call you or walk right in to see you. Your pipeline fills that funnel and then it's up to you to convert. Now, the third step is information your product might want to know. Only at this step, would you consider product knowledge, such as mentioning CVT, traction control, power windows and power locks, keyless entry, configurable cargo space. But those are no longer features on the buyer's radar. They are not dynamite anymore, gang. So don't even mention them. These features that I just mentioned are expectations. So you're not really telling me as a buyer anything new. That's why your messaging doesn't resonate with them. It's your messaging that's broken, not you, the industry, or your dealership or the brand. Driving dynamics, engine size, fuel economy, small displacement turbochargers, 10-speed transmissions, diesel and electric engines, drive modes, quietness, ride quality, production quality, new plant production, new series, platform, connectivity are improvements over their current car. That's what creates interest. That's the opportunity. You want the interest in the improvement because that creates the opportunity for them to become a shopper and eventually convert to buyer. Autonomous parking or driving and electric powered vehicles tops that list. 
message me if you see the difference right now go to your chat and message me if you see the difference between improvement versus opportunity and then cite some examples i really want to know that you're getting this because this is what average ordinary salespeople, everyone you're competing with doesn't get there's a transformation happening always happen i'm not reinventing the wheel here you should not look at me and say bill teach me something new because new doesn't work what works are fundamentals and what we're identifying is the improvements create the opportunity for the transformation. The customer going from their old car, bridging to the new car. We've talked about bridging extensively. Go back and review phase one of the manifesto if, if you really don't get that. I'm guessing by the responses. Yeah, I'm guessing by the responses, the lines between steps two and three that I just went through just reading all of them. <laughs> it's coming in fast. Holy cow. I'm not going to be able to read them. And I, I can't mention everybody that that's responding. Okay, well, clearly the lines between the two are blurry. Transformation and opportunity. Well, that comes down to this. Your description identifying features then as opportunities like trailer backup assist features on a pickup truck can transform a shopper with a message like you would say this just imagine being at the trailer park watching the trailer park entertainment hour which is first thing in the morning uh because everybody's got to be out by 10 or around three o'clock to five o'clock because you can't be in much before two o'clock when you get to the trailer park. Just imagine being in the trailer park during the entertainment hour of set up and tear down and being the observer as opposed to being the entertainment. That's what trailer backup assist will do for you. You are not the entertainment anymore. That's what I'm trying to say in a nutshell. You boil it down to a talk track that really works for you. If you've got a customer that has an ATV, I know they've got a snowmobile and vice versa and share with them how dynamite it will be towing and parking and turning around those larger awkward objects backing up because you're looking in the rear view mirror and the wheel turns the opposite way to get the trailer to move. You know what it's like. And if you don't know what it's like, get a trailer and, and talk to someone who's got one and say, hey, let me try this. If your transformation is vivid enough, it will be enough to trigger a buying experience. Step four, trust. Do you know, do you know, you have 100% of their trust, but it's what you say and do that jeopardize that trust. Being honest, open and transparent doesn't mean that you have to be more Catholic than the Pope. Don't message or say anything like there's no deals offered so don't ask or inventory is non-existent this is the only one and the boss is not going to give it away that may be true but your repeat and your referral and your friends and your family do not want to hear that let them get down the road to the sale as you help them buy one and then be the bearer of bad news the last step to a successful pipeline harvesting process is getting them into your eight-step process. So you need to facilitate a presentation and demonstration. That's what solidifies the deal. If you don't do a presentation and a demonstration, they're focused on price. That's their only thing to work with. You're negotiating away your commission and your gross. If they respond to your message and it sounds interesting, don't just hang the phone up or stop emailing. Don't assume that they'll come in even though you set an appointment. You need to ask for the appointment or the opportunity, pardon me, to facilitate a presentation. And number one, suggest a presentation virtually. Keep them on the hook. Keep them excited about it, right? They've looked online. They've watched a bunch of videos. That's perfectly fine. In step number nine, I'll share with you how to get familiar with Zoom and Google Meetings so that you can do so. Regardless of inventory and availability, always recommend a virtual meeting presentation. It sets you up as the automotive authority, going through features, building and pricing, calculating payments. And remember, the most important thing on their list is price. So don't hide or shy away from it. 
So let's talk about curating content. And then I'll wrap this up because I just noticed we're over time and I want to field some questions and let you get on with your day and test out those talk tracks and call a repeat and referral. So curating content to be top of mind. Curate does not mean create. Now I know for you to do this, it must be easy and you don't have a lot of time to spend on it. So when a prospect Googles you, they want to see that you're active on social. They want to learn more about you as well. That only makes sense. So I believe that the best place for you to start to host your content, you're going to have to host your content somewhere. That's where you create it. Uh, effectively clicking on is Facebook. That's your starting point. Then I would suggest Instagram and then select LinkedIn, Snapchat, TikTok, um, Twitter, you decide. You'll need these platforms moving forward to leverage with Hootsuite, Meet Edgar and Sendable, maximizing your time to be most efficient. And with that gang, I am going to adjourn the meeting. There's a lot more information I wanted to share with you there. As you can see, I'm flying through slides, but in the interest of time, because we've got these every single week, it's not like this is the only time that you have to do this. I want to bring this meeting to an end. Thank you so much for joining me. Does anybody have a question, a comment about pipeline, building that pipeline? Because as important as it is to understand the buyer profiles, how buyers buy, why buyers buy, how we can chameleon ourselves to them, as important as it is to follow the eight steps, as critical as it is to have a dynamite presentation and presentation skills, can you see how important it is? To have customers. This is the folly of average ordinary dealerships. They spend more money on advertising than they do on training. This is the folly of any leader who decides that it's more important to have a pipeline of customers flowing into the showroom and into the dealership and all the contact points than it is to do the training. Because as I mentioned before, hey, you can have all of that, but if you don't have a process to follow, and you don't have a plan to get them to convert, you can piss them off real fast. And I'm sure you've in, in, kind of encountered a number of shoppers that have seen or been introduced to or gone through the process that I call sales assistance to you because that other consultant has done an amazing walk around presentation, but no demonstration drive, no commitment, no commitment strategy. And of course they left. And that's why a customer walks into you and says, I don't need to see it. I don't need to drive it. I just need to know what your best price is. To which you follow up with, okay, you know, who are you comparing me to? Where did you see it? Is this your neighbor's car? Is this your coworker's car? Is this a family member's vehicle that you've driven lots? What year is it? What model is it? Just give me five seconds to share with you three points. I'm certain they don't know exist. I got to take a drink of water, gang. Does anybody have a question, a comment? I can't believe there isn't a question or a comment all the way through there. Now, if you're concerned about the technology, don't be. Step number nine, leveraging apps and tech will make it really, really easy for you. And of course, we're, I'm going to do a class on that. What is covered in these classes may sound and look really familiar to what is covered in the lesson, the video lessons of the on-demand training portal. They are not. Uh, thanks, Dalton. Really appreciate that. And uh, looking forward to, to chatting with you tomorrow. Carter has scheduled his uh, one-on-one -on -one coaching. So for all of you at Wendell, you anyone who has gone through the step number eight, you now have access to my calendar through Calendly. Just click on the link and book your one-on-one -on -one session. And of course, uh, it sounds like, oh my gosh, with everybody that's out there, Bill, how do you have time? That's the purpose of Calendly. I'll show you how to leverage Calendly for your customers that want to book appointments on your schedule makes life a whole lot easier. And it, it's really familiar for them. How We look at this stuff and we go, yeah, but will they really do it, Bill? Yeah, they do. If you go to book your chiropractic appointment, your physio appointment, um, a masseuse appointment, they're all leveraging these digital platforms that have virtual appointment scheduling. And it just 
makes it a whole lot easier picking your date and your time. So Carter, really look forward to seeing you there. Um, you have to have gone through the blueprint because we use the blueprint as the blueprint, right? It forms a lot of our talking points and then feeds back to what is working and what isn't. But um, if nobody has, because the day is flying by at 10 after 11, if nobody has a question or comment, and I'm thinking six minutes was enough time for someone to be able to dream it up or type it in, then I will wrap this up. Thanks so much for joining me, all of you. That was absolutely fantastic. I hope you got a ton out of it. As always, these sessions are recorded. For those of you not a part of the private members Facebook group, and I will send you an invite again. And if you're rolling your eyes like, Bill, it's Facebook. Oh my gosh, Facebook is done. Nobody goes on Facebook. I, I gave up Facebook years ago. I never even got on Facebook. Get on it. It's still the monster. It would be like me saying to you, well, Bing Hootsuite. Bing is a search engine. How about you? Yahoo Hootsuite or Meet Edgar or what that is. Like it just doesn't even make any sense because Google has become such a powerhouse, a monster in that search engine solving our questions, right? But get on Facebook. If you don't have a Facebook account, register. It's free. Join the private members group. You don't have to go out and find a bunch of friends. You don't even have to accept the friends that Facebook will attach to you. But you need to be on that. The Daily Planner is in uh, the, uh, pardon me, sorry, Craig. No, I, I don't have a Daily Planner. What, I'm, what I said in the very beginning was whatever Daily Planner you use, follow that. I would always recommend, because I'm familiar with it, Craig, Google, that I... Everything is scheduled in my Google calendar. Uh, this is obviously where I invite people as well. Uh, I do my invitation meetings through Zoom, but I'll put that in the details of my Google calendar. If you use Outlook at the dealership because of Microsoft, excellent, great daily planner. If it's an analog, like the old day timers daily planner, no problem at all. But make sure you schedule these activities into your planner for the week, for the month, even for the year. Right, it's so easy to go ahead. And every single one of these things has a planner. So I would encourage Google, but you can pick whichever one you want. I am familiar with Google and Outlook. Those are the, the two monsters. Uh, but uh, if you tell me which one you use, I can do research on it and we can coach to it. Um, the Google Docs now are available in the private members group of Facebook, the Auto Dealership Academy private members group. So they're found under files. I would encourage everybody to go and grab all those docs. Those docs are interspersed throughout the on-demand lesson planning modules as well. So you'll see PDFs or uh, access to uh, the, that documentation. And of course, they're in the post. If uh, in the if in Facebook in the private members group, you go to the magnifying glass. It's about halfway down the screen on the right hand side. Facebook, and the reason why I use Facebook is that it is a search engine like Google all unto itself. So you can type in what you're looking for. You can type in Google Docs, and of course, woo. It'll take you immediately to that and where that is on the Facebook page. And of course, if you are familiar with Google Drive and Google Docs and you have a Google account, then in your Google account, in your Google screen, your home screen of your email, and in on the about two thirds of the way down on the right hand side, you'll see the proverbial nine dots. Click on the nine dots. All of Google's applications should drop down for you and select Drive. And there you can go to the Auto Dealership Academy and see the documentations in there. I will have a video on that. It's coming up very shortly. We are just completing the script. Then we have to film it and then edit it. And I'll get that up online to show you very quickly and easily how to access that. I think that that would be really helpful going forward. And without that, gang, if there aren't any questions, and I'll pause for questions. I almost, almost said station identification. 
I, I guess I got to slow down, right? There's one thing presenting online in the screen, but uh, <laughs> I'm not that big, am I? You are welcome. Thanks, Craig. Thanks, Mark. Thank, thank you, everyone, for joining me today. For our Americans in the room, happy Thanksgiving. And I look forward to seeing all of you next week. Have a fantastic close to the week, an amazing weekend. Let's make this month absolutely incredible. Look forward to seeing you December 1st. Holy smokes, where has this year gone? Talk to you again real soon. Bye-bye for now.